NFTs or non-fungible tokens have suddenly surged in popularity. NFTs are selling for thousands of dollars, but these things look like it's just creating value out of air. I'm an economist and I want to help you understand the economics of NFTs, what gives them value, and actually help you see that the concept of NFTs has been around for a long time. And I think to understand the scale of what's going on here, we need a banana. So NFT stands for non-fungible token. Before you can understand what an NFT is, you need to understand what these words mean. Now token means that this is something stored on the blockchain, but what does non-fungible mean and how is it different from something that is fungible? When I think of fungible things, the first thing that comes to my mind, because I'm an economist, are dollar bills. Dollar bills are fungible. What that means is imagine I present $2 bills to you. I can ask you to choose one of them. I can mix them up again and then say, now which dollar bill do you want to have? You don't care which one you have. A dollar bill is a dollar bill. There's really no way to distinguish them. Now, some clever people are going to be like, well, they have serial numbers on them. You can distinguish between $2 bills and that's true. But in terms of their use, they're indistinguishable. Now let's think of something that's non-fungible. In our house, we stan Pokemon. Like we have Pokemon all over the place. Pokemon are on our walls. We've got the Pokemon cards everywhere. Our family loves Pokemon. Now, if you look at these two Pokemon cards, they look exactly the same. If I was to move them around, you really couldn't tell me anything about these two cards. But as soon as I flip this card over, you see that it's a holographic dark Charizard, which is a decently valuable card. And when I flip this card over, it's a trainer, which is garbage. It is literally the worst thing that you can pull. They are so bad that you remember last year when we didn't have toilet paper because of the pandemic? Well, at least they're useful for something. The Pokemon cards are essentially indistinguishable. They are cardboard, yet it's by putting a little piece of information on the front of them that distinguishes them, that gives them value, that makes it so you can't exchange them. It makes them non-fungible. So an NFT is a token on the blockchain that can't be easily exchanged for something else. It's very much like a trading card. Before we get into the economics of NFTs, let me give you an example of an NFT that is hot right now. NBA Top Shot. When you go to NBA Top Shot, you can browse around and see different highlights from the NBA. And they call these moments. And you have the opportunity to purchase these highlights. But it's important that you understand what you are purchasing and what you aren't. What you aren't purchasing is the rights to this video. Even though it shows you a video of LeBron James going up for a big dunk, you aren't getting the right to display that video. You aren't getting royalties for any time somebody displays that video. You are just purchasing a line of text that says you own that play. And so what does ownership even mean in this instance? It means that there is a token. It means there's something on the blockchain associated with this play, and you are the only one who owns it. Now, for each play, they actually have a couple of different tokens that are being sold. Some of them have a lot, some of them have a few, and you own one of those tokens. If you really boil down to it, it's just a few words or maybe even a sentence that describes this play. And yet people are paying crazy amounts for them. Right now, if you want to get this dunk of LeBron James, the lowest asking price is $213,000. Now that's the asking price. No one has actually paid that amount yet for this specific dunk. The highest amount that somebody's paid for this play is $125,000. And now people are saying, if you want to get mine, you're going to have to pay me at least $213,000, but not a lot of people are listing theirs for sale right now. Now, at first glance, it seems really weird that you would be willing to pay real money to get a line of text on a computer. Yet we do this pretty often. In fact, I do it pretty regularly with my Kindle. I am paying money for just words on my Kindle. I don't actually own the words in any sense. I've never been able to resell a Kindle book. I don't know if you can nowadays. You can hardly even lend them out to people but I'm willing to pay a couple of bucks, sometimes even more, to get words delivered to my Kindle. So it's not that weird that we pay money for these things. The question is, why are people willing to pay such insane numbers for these sentences? What gives these things value? 
Well, to understand what gives them value, you need to first understand that these have been around for a long time. I could go further in the past to show you, but just going to December 2019 is going to be enough. You remember before 2020 turned us all bananas, there was the warning sign in December 2019 where Mauricio Catalan went to Miami and duct taped a banana to the wall. Now, normally this would be a non-event, but Mauricio Catalan was an artist. And this artist then said the asking price for this piece of art is $120,000. Who in the world would pay $120,000 for a banana duct tape to the wall? Well, it turns out a couple of people would. The New York Times reported that three people paid a combined total of $390,000 for the banana duct tape to the wall. Why in the world would people spend that much money for something that would spoil within a week. In fact, the original banana didn't even make it a full 48 hours. After this thing went viral, another artist showed up at the exhibit. He was a performance artist. He came in and took that banana that somebody paid $120,000 for, that three people paid $390,000 for, and ate it. What's the museum going to do? How do you get insurance on something that quickly? Well, that afternoon, they just put up a new banana. They just bought another banana, grabbed some duct tape, and put it on the wall. That is the definition of fungible. What you're saying is this banana is exactly the same as any other banana, and as long as you duct tape it to the wall, it's art. It is Catalan's art, you might even argue, but that is the line at which we must draw because for it to be Catalan's art, it must have the Certificate of Authenticity, the COA. When this was going viral and the museums were trying to explain what was going on, one museum explained, without a COA, a piece of conceptual artwork is nothing more than its material representation. What they're saying is that this banana without a COA is just the banana, it's nothing else. But once you have that Certificate of Authenticity, now it's art. What's on the COA that actually makes it art? Well, it has instructions for how to put it up, which I imagine is step one, grab a banana, step two, grab some tape, and step three, put it on the wall. But it also has the authenticity that these instructions were written by the artist for how to install this piece of art. Now all of a sudden, you have something that is non fungible because this is the only piece of paper that has been authorized by the artist himself. The COA is the same thing as an NFT. It's that NFT that duct tapes LeBron James to the wall. The only difference between the NFT and the COA is that the NFT is stored on the blockchain. In fact, if you go back to that other sentence and you replace COA with NFT, it has the same meaning. Without an NFT, the description of LeBron James dunk is just words. It has no value. But once you create that NFT, you have created a COA on the blockchain and you've created something of value. So NFTs in their conceptual form have been around for a long time. But the question is, what gives these things value? Now we're getting to the important part, and if you haven't been paying attention so far, I hope you're paying attention now, because the value for NFTs comes from economic concepts that we have understood for centuries. There are two factors coming in and affecting this. The first is scarcity. NFTs are designed to be rare. This is a huge innovation for the digital economy. With most things that you produce on a computer or online, the resource can be immediately duplicated. You just copy the code and paste it. That is the material resource. But there's no value associated with it because there's no scarcity. Bananas are pretty abundant in the world, but somebody who creates a certificate associated with a specific artist, associated with a specific meme, has created scarcity about a certificate about a banana. It's the COA that has the value because it's scarce. In fact, about a year after the whole banana meme went viral, another artist was really upset that he wasn't able to get a COA for himself. He wanted to buy the artwork from Catalan, and in fact, he offered one of his own pieces in exchange. And Catalan came back and said, I don't have any more, I've, I'm out of them, I can't just make another one, which seems ridiculous, right? It's, all they're doing is just grabbing a banana and taping it to the wall. 
But what's going on is that he created COAs and he cannot create more COAs without degrading the value of the previous COAs. So he's personally committing to not creating more COAs. Now for that commitment to be credible, we just have to believe him. We have to believe that he will hold strong, that nobody can persuade him to create more. For an NFT to be valuable, we don't need to rely on that promise. We know we are guaranteed that there are only a certain amount of NFTs NFTs and that you can't duplicate them, anybody who tries to duplicate them can be immediately caught. The blockchain is the first time we've been able to create scarcity with digital goods, and this is a huge building block to the virtual economy. Speaking of virtual economies, if you are interested in learning more about those, I recommend this book, Virtual Economies. One of the authors on it is Ted Castronova. He wrote a paper on the economics of EverQuest that first inspired me to keep going in economics. So I'm really excited about about what blockchain means for virtual economies. And if you're interested in that, you can dive into that too. But now let's get to the second reason because scarcity isn't enough to create value. I could create an autograph picture of myself and guarantee that it is the only autograph picture of me available. I would never duplicate it. I would create an NFT on it yet you're never going to buy that. Nobody would be interested in it. If this was the last picture of me that existed and I die and my wife is left without any pictures of me and I say you can only get this picture if you pay $10,000, my wife would say, you know what? I've got a memory of him. I'll live with that, right? We are not gonna pay $10,000 for a picture of this. Scarcity is not enough to create value. There has to be some sort of demand, and that's the second source. We have demand for some scarce goods because we know that they will hold value. Think of the banana. The reason why people are willing to pay such a high price for that COA is because it was a meme. They know that people will remember this. I'm still talking about it a year and a half later. They know that it's going to retain some sort of salience, some sort of value. And so if they sell that asset in the future, it's going to maintain its value or appreciate. They know there's going to be demand. The NBA understands that fans want to be part of the NBA community. They love highlights. They know that there is going to be value behind this asset. I could create my own asset based on what's going on in the NBA, but no one cares what I'm creating. This is a credible organization akin to an artist creating an asset that they know that people are going to care about in the future. Before I get into my final comment on NFTs, let me just remind you that an NFT has value because it's scarce and because enough people want it. There's a high enough demand and that's what creates value. But let's think about NFTs more broadly. What is the value of NFTs as a concept? Well, I think what's really interesting about NFTs is they're actually bringing cryptocurrency into the mainstream in a way that is you know, acceptable. Cryptocurrencies as a medium of exchange have received a really bad rap because the people use them it for illicit activities. This is a way that people are using it to store value for artists, for the NBA. There are other ways that we're creating value and this is going to allow crypto economics to spread even broader. Now, if you're skeptical of cryptocurrencies more broadly because you're worried about these illicit activities, I recommend you go check out this video I did on cryptocurrencies compared to just regular good old fashioned American greenbacks.